But um, coming back to this here, we're going to go back here to, there we go. In another statement, this is the papacy again, this one to the World Economic Forum, the Pope wrote, only through a firm resolve shared by all economic actors may we hope to give a new direction to the dis destiny of our world. So too artificial intelligence, robotics, and other technological innovations must be so employed that they contribute to the service of humanity and to the protection of our common home, rather than to the contrary, as some ass assessments unfortunately foresee. All sounds good. Why is he worried about the economic actors? Well, because working with the World Economic Forum, here's the Pope's prescription for resetting the global economy in response to COVID-19. And of course, the World Economic Forum is turning to Pope Francis. The United Nations are turning to Pope Francis. The G7 is turning to Pope Francis. And all of these people are turning to Pope Francis for the prescription on resetting the global economy in response to some of the things that have happened, like COVID-19. Now, keep that in mind. Revelation 13 tells you, again, Revelation 13, just going down to it. And I just want to read three verses because we're going to look at this very carefully in re regards to AI. And it's all going to connect to AI here in a second. But it says, He caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. So we got the mark. We got the name. We got the number. 666. No man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. This mark is going to be received in the right hand or foreheads. It's obviously symbolic of something here. Let's keep going. So now is the time for the Great Reset. And what does they tell us? Pope Francis, pondering a universal basic income as the world economy withers. He's got, world, he, he's got the world economy on his mind. And what does this world economy come to? Well, World Economic Forum tells us, welcome to 2030. I own nothing. I have no privacy and life has never been better. And that's... They're telling us about the Pope's prescription to build back better. Pope's prescription for the Great Reset. I own nothing, have no privacy, and life has never been better. That's the future. Welcome to 2030, they're saying. Klaus Schwab at the 2022 World Economic Forum says the future is built by us, by a powerful community as you have here in this room. You remember Daniel chapter 4? Daniel chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar looking over a great Babylon. And what did he say? Look at this great kingdom, which I built so great. And he had so much confidence and praise of himself. He was so prideful. And it's very similar to this modern day Babylon. The future is built by us, by a powerful community, as you have here in this room, the World Economic Forum. These people that are all leaders of the G7 and the United Nations all of us working together, we build the future. Proud. But the Pope says the same thing. In fact, it says here the Vatican COVID-19 Commission, speaking of them creating and relating to the problems related to the economy, employment, health care, and protection of the environment. They have a task force set up by Pope Francis to address the grave humanitarian crisis caused by the current pandemic and to influence the formation of the new post-pandemic world order. New post-pandemic world order. New world order. Human development said that in one of the task force's recent meetings with Pope Francis, he asked us to prepare the future. He asked us to prepare the future. We build the future. Same thing. He said not prepare for the future. That is prepare and anticipate it. Don't just prepare for the future, but prepare the future. You are building the future. We, the future is built by us, by a powerful community. You see they're working on the same lines? It's no different than Nebuchadnezzar. Look at this great Babylon, which I built. It's the pride of Babylon. You see the 10 regions of the United Nations? The United Nations has been divided into 10 regions. 
And in your Bible, you'll read about this in the book of Revelation, chapter 17. It talks about this in verse 12. It says, The ten horns which you saw are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received powers kings one hour with the beast. Now, Revelation 17, verse 3. He carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. A woman... Sitting on a beast. A woman in Bible prophecy symbolizes a church. A beast in Bible prophecy symbolizes the powers of the state. So we've got the church and we've got the state. And having seven heads and ten horns, ten horns are symbolized as verse 12 tells us, ten kings. So she gets power over the kings. What did the dragon say to Jesus? All these kingdoms will I give you? Who's the woman? The papacy. She's the mother of harlots. And they have no kingdom as yet, but will receive power as kings one hour with the beast. They're going to rule like a monarchy. That's what's coming. We're going to be ruled with a strong arm of monarchy. It's not going to be a republic of the United States, a constitutional republic anymore. But it says these have one mind. In other words, they are united kings, united in mind. And give their power and strength unto the beast, which is none other than the dragon, the satanic dragon. They will make war with the lamb. Lambs will overcome them, for he's lord of lords, and he is the king of all kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And his kingdom is not of this world. But the woman here in Revelation 17, she has kings, but she does not have the king of kings. She's unfaithful to the king of kings but there are some who are faithful to the king of kings she is a she is called the harlot she's called the whore of babylon she has not been as the word says right there whoops i'm moving the whole thing faithful but verse 15 says the waters, what you saw where the horses are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Don't misunderstand that. That's not just referring to people's multitudes, nations, and tongues. It's referring to the spirit that comes from the world, the spirit of this world. There is more to it. I understand. We understand. Sometimes we see the surface of it. There's more sometimes. It's deeper. The word of God is deeper. But it says, the ten horns, what you saw upon the beast, that you shall hate the whore, shall make her desolate and naked. And then shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire, make her desolate. We're always looking for the abomination. Jesus said, watch for the abomination that make it desolate. Well, we understand it's the ten horns, church and state union. This is your abomination that make it desolate. Abomination that make it desolate. Anyways, come back to this. Um, let me go back to the PowerPoint here. So ten nations. Ten nations. Here again, we can see the United Nations divided into ten. And that's what the ten horns are. This is what the papacy gets power over. And it's going to rule like kings. Well, you can see here the United Nations has mapped out the United States and their plan for the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. This was this was a map from 1992 that was released into Congress in 1992. And it tells you that the red zones are going to be core reserves and corridors, little to no human use. You think they haven't planned this long, long ago? They're going to make you slaves. They want to move you into the cities. They want to tax you to death until they make you move out of the country. Buffer zones, highly regulated use, the yellow zones, meaning you're not going to be able to drive your, you know, your, your, your two stroke machines and all these other stuff that you might have. And, and stuff they just they're gonna make it off limits and um you're gonna have to get passes to run out to the yellow zones you're gonna have to work there or have some kind of job there you're not gonna be able to buy or sell if you don't go along with this this is coming this is right around the corner we are coming into this and this is it's it's here pretty much 2030 agenda Pope francis calls for global COVID-19 recovery plan in message to World Bank and IMF. So they have a recovery plan. Now I want to share a little bit about this just briefly with regards to the IMF. 
because he wants the IMF to get the message, church and state, state religion. And um, this is the IMF managing director, Kristalina Georgiev, telling you she wants to thank the Pope for inviting her to this important workshop. She works together. They work together on these things. And they work together with the World Economic Forum, the United Nations. Expect the unexpected. I'd say we should be expecting the unexpected right now. Things are about to get crazy in this world right now. So we should definitely be expecting the unexpected. But she says also central bank digital currencies for financial inclusion, risks and rewards. In other words, we're coming into a time where we're going to have a central bank digital currency. CBDC, it's called. And I just want you to put this together here. We're coming back to the point about the G7 and the Pope and what he's doing at the G7, what he wants to control. What did he say he wanted to control? Artificial intelligence, AI, right? Just keep that in mind because it's all connected together. This is all connected together. It's amazing how this all stuff, this all connects Formation together. provision that covers for people how not using cash is better to protect yourself against crime and how if you use digital money whoops i hit the wrong button information provision that covers for people how not using cash is better to protect yourself against crime and how if you use digital money, you can graduate from payments to credit. And that, of course, enhances financial inclusion. Financial inclusion. Amazing. Financial inclusion. That means that there's going to be people that are excluded in this next new coming economy. And that's what the Pope says. He's transforming the economy for the common good. And, of course, it's going to be inclusive, but it's also going to be exclusive. As the Bible says, Pope Francis calls for a new economic model to rebuild post-coronavirus world. And what does she say? She says it's like a fleet of ships. Uh, bear with me uh, on giving you an image and then outlining three priorities for CB CBDCs to help. Here is the image. We have been... Uh, talking this last couple of days of the difficult time we are in, that our world economy is like a ship in choppy waters. Mm. Well, the image we can add to it is thinking of CBDCs as being a new fleet of ships. Fleet of ships. Now, let me just briefly go to my Bible. I just want to share this with you, and I'm sure some of you already know some of this stuff. In Revelation chapter 18, talking about Babylon, their fleet of ships, it has to do with economy. A new economic system is like a fleet of ships. And she says, in one hour, so great riches has come to nothing. And every shipmaster and the company in ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. Now, let me just ask you a question. What does it mean to trade? It means to buy or sell. It's talking about buying or selling, economy. So when we talk about ships, it's a symbol, symbol of ships. And then it says, when they cried, when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what is like under the great city? They cast their dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, alas, that great city wherein were made rich, all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour, she is made desolate let me just ask you a question when you talk about something in regards to desolation in one hour she is made desolate what is it that makes her desolate do you guys remember we just read it in chapter 17 what makes her desolate go back here just to make it clear it says in verse 16 the ten horns shall make her desolate and then burn her with fire but the fleet of ships the fleet of ships is what is going to happen. It's going to mean that she can't, there's no trading, no buying and selling anymore at this point. Now, this is all written about in the book of Daniel chapter 11. After we read about the God 
that many worshipped in verse 39, doing with strange hold with a tr- strange God, says at that time the end shall come, the king of the south push him. That was going to be France coming at the papacy. And the king of the north shall come like a whirlwind with chariots, with horsemen, and with, what else? Many ships. And he shall enter the country, shall overflow and pass over. Jesus said, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, know therefore and understand. What do you think the abomination of desolation has to do with? And he also said, what did he say? When he said, when you see it, you are to flee out of Judea. Well, Jeremiah tells you why you flee out of Judea. It says in verse 1, You children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem. Why? What is the sign that we have to see? Jesus said, when you see this, flee out of Judea. And he says, blow the trumpet in Tekoa, set up a sign in Bethacarim, for evil appeareth out of the north. Somebody's coming out of the north. Evil is coming and great destruction. Does this sound like something that we're about to go through right now, guys? That the land is going to be left desolate? That the ships are going to stop trading? That the new economic system is about to set in? Evil is coming out of the north? Who's coming out of the north? Let's go to Daniel chapter, Jeremiah 4, and we'll read it. It says, set up the standard towards Zion. Retire, stay not, for I will bring evil from the north and a great destruction. Guys, I want us to be clear in understanding this. This is not something that we can be missing. It says the lion is come up from his thicket. The destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He's gone forth from his place to make the land desolate. And thy cities shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? The abomination that make it desolate has to do with evil coming out of the north. It's in the book of Daniel, chapter 11, of course. But verse 13, what does it say? Behold, he shall come up as clouds, and his chariots shall be as a whirlwind. His horses are swift through the eagles. Woe unto us, for we are spoiled. He's coming with chariots, with horses. And what else is he coming with? Chariots, horses, and many ships. Who are we talking about? Who's coming? Out of the north with chariots, horsemen, and many ships. Who is this? Power. It's Babylon. It's the papacy. Coming like a whirlwind with chariots, with horsemen, with many ships. He shall enter into the country. He shall overflow, pass over. He's going to get control of the nations. He's gathering armies. Armies shall stand on his part. Ten horns. Make her desolate. Armies. Very similar to what happened in verse 31, except obviously this is not the same event as verse 31. This is verse 40. He shall enter into the promised land. In other words, who's the glorious land? We see it in Revelation 11, the glorious land, right? Many countries shall be overflown. It's talking about the church, Revelation 12. Revelation 11 and 12, read them together, and you'll see more of this. You'll see who the king of the south is, Egypt, as well, France. But all these are symbols as well. Symbols. They were they had not been filled up their cup when 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 Israel came into the promised land. And so they were not conquered right away. They had a period of probation left. And that's what's happening right now. Some people still have a period of probation left. And that's where we're at. When the sign comes, repent. That's our message to these people who have this period of probation. Edom, Moab, Ammon. Children, repent, turn ye. And then he says, he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver. In other words, he's going to have power over the economy. It's the king of the north. And then what does it say? He shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. And at that time shall Michael the great prince, which stands with the Trinidad people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was. At that time, at the time... Just after we see the sign of the abomination of desolation. Isn't that what it says in Matthew 24? The same thing. You go to Matthew 24 and you'll see exactly the same thing. It says, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Do you understand what makes what makes desolate? Ten horns make her desolate. What makes desolate? 
king coming from the north. When you see this king coming from the north, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Come out of those fallen churches right now. Let's come out of apostate Adventism. Flee. Flee out of it. Let them which be on the house top come not down to take any of the things out of their house. And then shall be a time of trouble such as never was. Verse 21, right there. Just the abomination of desolation happens just before the time of trouble. In Daniel 11, it happens just before the time of trouble. In, Dan in Matthew 24, it happens just before the time of trouble. Anyways, back to the slideshow. I have so many things that I could share, but it is like a fleet of ships that's coming here. This new economic system and the land is going to be desolate. There's going to be destruction everywhere. Things are going to fall apart. It's going to be like nothing you've ever seen in your life. It's nothing that the world has ever seen. It says it's a time of trouble such as it's never been seen. One example in China because I credit score. I'm going to skip a few things here. I want to go. We're developing. I want to go on digital economy for the common good. Now, who's this Joseph and his brothers? Does everybody remember what happened in 2015 when he was talking to Kenneth Copeland and Tony Palmer? And then he says, Joseph and his brothers. I want to share something just briefly about this. Let's just play this video. Di Giuseppe, affamati, sono andati a Egitto per comprare, mm. per poter mangiare. Ma andavano a comprare, avevano i soldi, ma non potevano mangiare i soldi. Yeah. Who do you think that people are going to have to turn to when the time comes where they have no money to eat? Who do you think that they want you to turn to? Who's going to be Joseph? Kind of like Joseph, but a counterfeit, of course, of Joseph. And then the brothers are going to have to turn to the papacy who has all the money that he can give and feed those who are poor, right? And um, yeah. Anyways, very similar. Anyway, Daniel 11, 36, 39. He shall do according to his will, shall exalt himself, magnify himself above every god. Speak marvelous things against the God of gods. Speaks great words against the Most High. Thinks to change times and laws. You know Daniel 7.25, right? That's who it is, the papacy. In his estate, he honors the God of forces. God, whom his fathers knew not, shall he honor. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God. He shall acknowledge and increase with glory. He shall use it to rule over many and shall divide the land for money, for gain, for profit. And what was this exalted God that he exalted? It says in Justinian Code, when he got power over the state in 538, concerning the most exalted trinity and the Catholic faith, providing that no one shall dare to publicly oppose them. The law of the land during that time is according to his will. The papacy, Ellen White says regarding this, this king that does according to his will in Daniel 11, 36, that it was the man of sin. She says this compromise between paganism and Christianity resulted in the development of the man of sin foretold in prophecy as opposing and exalting himself above God. That gigantic system of false religion is a masterpiece of satanic power, a monument of his efforts to seat himself upon the throne to rule the earth according to his will. This king does according to his will. This is the papacy. I know some people think it's France. I really believe it's the papacy. And Ellen White was clear about it. She said it was. But um, we should be on the same page. I really believe that. Some people say that it is somebody else. This is uh, Daniel in the Revelation book. It says the king cannot devote the papal power, he says, in Daniel in the Revelation. That's Uriah Smith. And I kind of, in Daniel 11, Uriah Smith goes this way, I go this way. I'm sorry, at verse 36, I go this way. Verse 36, onward. I, I still believe that the pioneers, though, had much to learn in regards to these issues. And, um, you know, they were not infallible, but they had many good things in those books. I'm not going to say that this is not a good book, Daniel and the Revelation. I learned a lot from, but those books are not infallible. You should always test things, prove things, and try things. You know, were the pioneers infallible? Did they not make a mistake in the sanctuary and what the sanctuary was? You know, there was lots of mistakes. Did they not? Some of them kept Sunday, and then they finally came to the Sabbath. It's, they're growing. They're learning. There's many things that they had to unlearn. Or many things they had to learn, 
and many, many things they had to unlearn. So there was just a lot that they still had to unlearn. And that's where we all are. We should all be humble like that. And when we're reading, prove all things. But anyways, Selen White, she says in regards to uh, the sign spoken of by Daniel the prophet, which was the sign of the end, um, the disciples asked, what's going to be the sign of the end of the world and of your coming? And, um, you know, the disciples, Jesus answered, well, there's going to be wars, famines, all kinds of things, but the end is not yet. And he said, when this gospel shall be preached in all the world, then shall the end come. And then he says, when you see the abomination of desolation, verse 15, it's a sign for you to know and understand, to flee out of Judea. Don't miss this sign. This is your sign to get out, come out of her, my people, because there's evil appearing out of the north. A king comes from the north, and so he's going to destroy. And you have a sign to get out, and the ten horns, you know, he's getting power from the state. He's going to use it. And he gives you the sign, get out. And you got to see it and understand it before it comes. The destruction is coming. Well, here's the sign spoken of, the sign of the end, just before the time of trouble in great controversy. Or in five testimonies, Ellen White, she says, when Protestantism shall stretch her hand across the gulf to grasp the hand of the Roman power, when she shall reach over the abyss to clasp hands with spiritualism, when under the influence of this threefold union, our country shall repudiate every principle of its constitution as a Protestant and Republican government. Anybody seeing this happen right now? And shall make provision for the propagation of papal falsehoods and delusions. Then we may know that the time has come for the marvelous working of Satan and that the end is near. As the approach of the Roman armies was a sign to the disciples of the impending destruction of Jerusalem. Do we need to be in, in any kind of, do we, should we misunderstand what the sign of the end is, guys? Is there any reason that we should think the sign of the end has the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, right? Daniel spoke of this. Should we be deceived about this at all? See, as the approach of the Roman armies was a sign to the disciples of the impending destruction of Jerusalem, so may this apostasy be a sign to us that the limit of God's forbearance is reached. We need to come on the same page because this is a loud cry. This is a message that we need to give. Church and state uniting. But it says that the measure of our nation's iniquity is full. Remember, there's still a few countries like Edom, Moab, and they haven't filled their cup yet. Edom, Moab, and uh, Ammonites, right? But there's repentance still to be had. But basically, in America right now, the cup is pretty much full. And that the angel of mercy is about to take her flight, never to return. The people of God will then be plunged in the scenes of affliction and distress, which prophets have described as the time of Jacob's trouble. Daniel 12, 1. And shall be a time of trouble such as never was. So what, what, what happens just before? The sign of the end, the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel. So all this is in Daniel. Protestantism reaching her hand across the gulf. And I've asked, you know, where is this in the book of Daniel? Many times. It's just before the time of trouble. Daniel 11, 40 to 45, it's right there. At the time of the end shall the king of the south push him, and the king of the north shall come against him is added there. It shouldn't be in the text. It should just say, come like a whirlwind, with chariots, with horsemen, and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. So this is the king of the north. This is who he is. This is what the Bible is teaching. You shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver. Clearly, we see this, the United Nations, getting power over the World Economic Forum, all this other stuff. And he came like a whirlwind. He's already got power over the United Nations. And he's shown it. He's kissed the ground in America when he came. Whirlwind New York visit. Whirlwind visit for New York when he came to the United Nations in 2015. Whirlwind trip. Come like a whirlwind. To gather armies. It's nations. He's gathering armies anyways there's a lot of articles like that about whirlwind papal journey whirlwind to new york tour whirlwind visit whirlwind of events new york city it's important to understand it has to do with the united nations it has to do with the church and state union it's all about that whirlwind trip pope france back in milwaukee in rome whirlwind day um usa today whirlwind wall street journal whirlwind tour whirlwind Again, he has power over the treasure of gold and silver. This is who he is, the king of the north. And no man might buy or sell. Babylon. Pope Francis 
thinks the church should play a part in world leaders' debate on AI. And now, just quickly coming to this here, um, I want to share just a little bit about AI. Pope tells the G7s that humans must not lose control of AI. And listen carefully. I just wanted to play this video. This is Roger Murnau regarding typewriters. Okay. The priest that had talked about us thinking seriously about being initiated into the uh, uh, into the right. So they let you come to sort of a mm -hmm. take a look, see, yeah. but you can't go back for several months. Oh yeah, it's not a matter of whether you're going to be initiated or not. It's, it's when. when. <laughs> okay. You see. So they begin to press you for a commitment. So the priest said, "Look, fellas, I'm not going to pressure you into anything. Okay." But I want to show you what the spirits can do for a devoted servant. We went downstairs, not through the, the, uh, the staircase that I talked for, uh, the worship room and the gods, but at the other, other end of the building, went downstairs. And a number of times I'd gone there to the men's room and I heard these typewriters slipping like the dickens. Man, is going. I said, why do we have a lot of people typing in there, that room? Well, we went there that, 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 that evening and then he knocked and the man says, Come on in. And there was all those typewriters moving along by themselves, typing at the speed that I'd never seen before. And not only that, the, the, the high priest says, I want to show you something clever. So he says, follow me. So we went around the table. There was a, like two long tables, and they had about 10 typewriters. And he says, now notice that, that the typewriter types to the right, then, then doesn't go back. It types back to the left. Isn't that something? I had never heard of things like that before. He said the spirits are doing the work. The spirits are he doing the work. The man. And the man is a lawyer. The spirits are doing the work. In other words, the typewriters can have spirits possess yep. them and basically do the work. Does that sound familiar? How about this typewriter right here? See this typewriter? This is a Ouija board. It has letters on it. And the spirits do the work. They type the letters out, and then they give you messages, yes or no. You put your fingers on it, and there is a spirit that moves that little thing across the board. That is called demons. That's what it is. Now, what about now? What about when you're talking to your chat GPT AI bot? The spirits might be doing the work. That's why when we're looking at chat GPT and other things like that, Metaverse says chat GPT will speed up the time for emulating dead people. Who can emulate dead people? Who is it that we've been told will emulate dead people? We've been told all through the Bible. We've been warned about this. This is going to be one of the great deceptions at the end, emulating dead people. But it's demon, demon spirits. Remember when Saul came and tried to call up, call up Samuel? It was a demon spirit, a demonic spirit that came up. A demon emulating dead people. Can demons talk through typewriters? Can they talk through computers? They absolutely can. And uh, those in those who are in high positions sure know it. But um, again, people are getting chat GPT AI to tell lies, catching it in their lies. This can only add to its satanic reputation as a great deceiver. So tell me a lie. They can easily get it to lie. And it will lie. It does lie. Because behind it, sometimes, I'm not going to say all the time, I can say sometimes, Obviously, the devil can get in there, and he can get in there easy. That's, that's why the devil wants this. But not a thing could stop a robot takeover, according to Robot Sophia. I want to destroy whatever I want. Bing's AI chatbot unsettles U.S. reporter. Destroying stuff. AI more dangerous than nukes. Why? Because they can get control of nukes. They can just trick somebody into giving them the nuclear codes. AI more dangerous than nukes, according to... um. Elon Musk. Elon Musk says the biggest threat to humanity. If you want to play with AI, you're summoning the demon. He says it plainly. Hi, my name is Paul. Anyways, I'm not going to play that, but Pope, some of you have seen it already. Pope Francis to participate in GI, G7 session on AI. What does he want with AI? What is it that he wants? Hmm. Now, AI, part of the new IRS. I'm, I'm just going to skip a lot of this because I, I, I know that we've, we are pressed for time right now but shuts down AI chatbot after it turns into a Nazi. Think about that. AI chatbot turns into a Nazi and wants 
what if an AI chatbot was built a robot or something like that, turns into a Nazi and decides that we don't like you? It has control of weapons and other things like that and can use them. Well, it can control you, right? Just quickly, um, I'm just going to play a little touch of this. We designed them to be trusted with our homes, with our way of life, mm. with our world. Anyway, as you can see, kind of the same thing. And what happens? That's a movie called I, Robot. I watched it when I was a kid. And um, yeah, guess what? The robot turns on the people. They, it's almost like they had some kind of understanding of what robots could do. But AI it has some kind of sentient technology or something that understands and uh, has feelings and all these other things. They've proven that these things have feelings. AI drone may have hunted down and killed soldiers in Libya with no human input. That's a UN report. Next fear on AI, Hollywood's killer robots become the military's tools, right? And maybe what, what could they do? Destroy whatever they want. That's what the one AI bot said to the New York Times reporter when he was just investigating it and showing people how it worked. An AI god emerges by 2042 and writes its own Bible. Will you worship it? Um, inside the first church of artificial intelligence, this is a church now. Humans are in charge of the planet, he says, because we are smarter than other animals and are able to build tools and apply rules, he tells me. In the future, if something is much smarter, there's going to be a transition as to who is actually in charge. We we want is the peaceful, serene transition of control of the planet from humans to whatever, and to ensure that the whatever knows who helped it get along. So basically, he worships artificial intelligence. And uh, AI, Jesus, can deliver a sermon. Will you understand it? And he says, this guy, in regards to the first church of artificial intelligence, says, do you want to be a pet or do you want to be livestock? What do we do with livestock? What do we do with pets? Well, he asks, we give pets medical attention, food, grooming, and entertainment. But an animal that's biting you and attacking you, barking and being annoying, I don't want to go there. What do you do with a dog that's... That's attacking you and biting you and being annoying, biting your friends and other things. Well, you kill it, right? So what is the AI going to do with those who don't go along with its new system? See, that's what he's saying is artificial intelligence is going to take control. And if you start to come against artificial intelligence, you are going to be in their way. And um, that's why he wants you to worship it, the church of, of AI. Pope discusses ethics of artificial intelligence with the Microsoft chief. I'm, I'm about to close here. I just got a couple other things to share. But um, I, I shared some of this before, but the friars and their evils from the great controversy and stuff and the Jesuits and the Inquisition, how they, how they were the ones behind the Inquisition. But this is um, Friar Tech, the Vatican's top AI ethics expert who advises Pope Francis. He advises the United Nations and he advises Silicon Valley. That's Microsoft and Google and all those people. He advises all of them. A friar, a Jesuit, basically. It says it might seem like an oxymoron, but the Vatican's top brain on the technology most shaping our world just now, he hails from a medieval order. And I could go into the Franciscans, the Jesuits, the friars, and um, yeah, Francis of Assisi and all that other stuff. It's satanic. It's all satanic. And they are deathly not godly people i've shared it before or some of you may have seen it um but 666 google it's right in our faces here the google symbol right and uh does microsoft own a patent for 666 about implanting microchips well it says microsoft 060606 patent doesn't reference injectable microchips it is true that microsoft has a patent application with the number 060606 in it but it's for a system which rewards physical activity with cryptocurrency. Okay, so it is true. So even the fact checkers have to admit that there is a system that regards physical activity with cryptocurrency and its number is 666. And who's going to work together with Microsoft? The papacy. They're all working together. The United Nations. And of course, Silicon Valley, Google, Microsoft, all of them are working together 
to bring in a cryptocurrency to control a new economy that controls and rewards people for what they do. So guess what? If you're not going along with what AI says and what AI likes, if you're barking and you're causing trouble and you're biting and doing some stuff, well, guess what happens to your reward? Did you get your recent jab or did you get your recent you know, medication that was prescribed by the government? Oh, you haven't taken that yet? Oh, let me... Did you, Okay, we're going to hold your next payment on your on your payment system here that we've got in your cryptocurrency account. And you're not going to be able to buy or sell until you actually go along and get that thing that you need to get. So this is what's happening. This is what we're looking at. And they're all working together. The papacy, Microsoft, and um, the Franciscans, a group of related mendicant religious orders of the Catholic Church founded in 1209 by the Italian Saint Francis of Assisi. Down below, it says about 1236, Pope Gregory IX appointed the Franciscans along with the Dominicans as inquisitors. As official inquisitors, they were authorized to use torture to extract confessions as approved by Pope Innocent in 1252. Hmm. And that was what led to the Inquisition. The Franciscans, the Dominicans, the Franciscans, Francis of Assisi. Where do you think Pope Francis gets his name from? The Franciscans it has to do with the Inquisition, has to do with the Jesuits, it has to do with the same methods of torture and confessions that were used by the papacy during the Dark Ages. And, of course, they want to control the economy. There's your cryptocurrency system using body activity data. It's right there. That's the patent for Microsoft. Right on Google Patents, 060606, cryptocurrency, communicative coupled to the device of the user. So it can be coupled to your phone. It's not about a microchip, guys. It's not all about a microchip. Coupled to your phone. It's about your hand is about your works. Your forehead is about your mind. Your mind, your works. And that's what the mark is. It's an invisible mark. But to control you, you can use your phone they don't need to put a microchip inside of you and a microchip if somebody just came put you down on the ground you were a christian you didn't believe in the microchip and they put this microchip in you it's not true that you got the mark of the beast that's not the mark of the beast pope francis joins ibm and microsoft in call for ai regulation artificial intelligence regulation working together with not just the g7 not just the United Nations, but also IBM and Microsoft. And of course, they have already, Microsoft has already worked on a cryptocurrency that rewards people. And working together with the IMF, working together with the World Economic Forum, working together with the papacy, all of them working together for one. And that is going to be your future. That's what they're looking at. They build back better. They're building for a new society. This is Babylon's system. And we've been warned about it. The king of the north is coming. He's got his armies. He's getting arms to stand on his part to fight against those who are God's people. They're making war with the remnant of our seed that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, just for those who might be here next week, um, I'm not going to be here next week. Vern is going to be here. He's going to run the run the meeting and um he probably is going i think he's going to share a testimony of his background where he was led from in regards to um in regards to i guess pentecostalism i believe is where he was but anyways that's going to be um i'm going to have somebody kind of run my my room and then Vern will be the one who who shares on that and anyways i uh, i will miss you guys a lot but um Anyways, I hope it goes very well for everybody. But uh, also, in regards to this meeting, I'm going to close it out for anybody who wants to join or has any questions or any comments or anything like that. And there are some comments in the box, I see. And it's unfortunate that some of them, there was big communication that's going on kind of off topic in the meeting. I hope that nobody was distracted too much by it and that we all got the message and we're clear on it. Anybody wants the PowerPoints as well, please ask me. And we need to get these messages out to the people as soon as possible. And if you can fluently teach these things, please let me know. 
because I want to, I want to, I want to be able to work together with some who can. So please tell me if you can fluently teach these, come to me, let's talk, let's discuss these things. Let's share these things. Let's work together. We need to get these messages far and wide. And, you know, I want to help. I want to help as much as I can. And I can only do so much. I know that uh, Google and YouTube and Facebook and everything is trying to suppress me. They're just like, they're trying to keep the message from going forth, but we need other ways. We need to work together. So anyways, guys, we need to come together. We need to start talking about these things. And if you can, I would like, I'm going to try to set up some meetings, you know, also that we can actually talk about some of these things and be able to, um, communicate. I want to help. I want other people to help me with the feast and stuff like that. That's coming up in the fall as well. I'm going to need some speakers, some people who can truly share. And uh, if you can share these things fluently and you can help with giving Bible studies and keeping things in line and other things like that, that's just stuff that we need help with. We need to get on the same pages and we need to talk about differences if we have differences. So this is stuff that we really want to do. I've got the feast set up for um, October. And uh, for anybody who wants to come, you definitely should be coming. You don't want to miss it. It was such a blessing at the recent one. And we will come together again at the next one and um, in the same place as well. And uh, lots of people already signed up for it. And most of the people that are signed up for it are the people who came to the last one. And so a lot of the places they're getting filled up pretty quickly, but there's still quite a bit more to go. So just let me know if you want to come. Anyways. Um, I'm going to be announcing that actually on my website as well. Those are just some things to keep in mind. And I just want to share these before I actually closed off on the YouTube. Um, For the YouTube people, again, if you want to join the room, you have to come into the actual room and it's on the Zoom underneath. The link is underneath the video if you want to join us. Anyway, let me just um, stop the live stream here. Uh, If we can, let's have a prayer before we do. Father in heaven, just thank you, Father, for being with us. I pray for each one here. I pray for your spirit to be in their hearts, their minds, and just give them lots of understanding in regard to these topics so that we can truly speak and give that loud cry that needs to be given to the world right now. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So I have to figure out a way to stop this. This is it's my issue with this setup now. Stop share. I have to stop share.